Hey carnivores, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are having a Gouda meat-fueled gorgeous day so far. I'm Steak and Butter Gal, Bella, if you are new here, and I cannot wait for you guys to meet my friend and special guest, Dr. Sarah Zaldivar. Sarah holds a PhD in exercise physiology and nutrition, and she is a licensed dietitian as well as a personal trainer. She is a passionate advocate, of course, for the carnivore diet, for exercise and dance. So we're going to really delve into all she knows knows and has learned about how to anti-age, about how to live longer. But of course, because Dr. Sarah Zaldivar looks fantastic, I had to ask her for her best tips on how to tone and define the body while losing fat and gaining muscle. As you guys all know, I host 30 day carnivore challenges every single month to help you guys directly on how to start the carnivore diet in the best way possible, on helping my experienced carnivores here further troubleshoot, tweak and optimize to get to our goals quicker and faster. I also make sure to feature the most brilliant minds in the carnivore space in these challenges so you guys can meet them live on Zoom, ask them your questions, learn from them, be inspired from them. So I mention this because Dr. Sarah Zaldivar will be a May challenge guest. So if you guys want to meet her, ask her all of your questions, get to know her live on Zoom, feel free to join the next carnivore challenge. You guys can go to svgmeetup.com or click the link down below in the description box to read more on the challenge slash sign up directly. So without further ado, let me invite on my special guest, Dr. Sarah Zaldivar. Sarah, welcome. Hi, Bella. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So I want to deep dive into your journey, your story, how you found carnivore diet. What I love so much about your channel is you deep dive into science, the studies. I know that you struggled with acne and skin issues a lot. So could you speak a little bit more on that? It was a lot of issues, but acne is the single biggest trigger that led me down the path of ancestral health and nutrition, functional medicine, and eventually carnivore diets. So I've tried um, every single acne medication on the market starting at age 17. That's wow. when it really started to become a problem. I became more aware of it because it was like a lot of bumps under the skin that were skin, skin toned. And I started being very self aware about that issue. So I started seeing all the dermatologists. And that was back in Lebanon when this happened. And then even when I came to Miami in 2012, this continued, and I kept on seeing dermatologists. And the first things they give you are just the topicals, the benzoic peroxide, then all of that, um, then the, uh, the birth control pills, spironolactone, antibiotics, three months, um, cycle and Accutane twice. Accutane is the pill that you ingest. Or yeah. It's like a form of a high dose vitamin A in pill form. You can get pregnant. You cannot be planning to get pregnant. It comes with a warning and it is a well-known trigger of depression episodes, which I've also struggled with and suicide, um, which I've also struggled with. So the only thing that Accutane did was give me cystic acne, which is something I've never really struggled with before. So it just made the acne a lot worse than what it was. Mm -hmm. And I've done it like for a six months course. And then I tried it the next year for another six month course, nothing happened. So because of my frustration, because of the emotional toll it takes on you, Yep. I just did not even want to leave the house. I, I hated everything about it. It made me so depressed. Um, I, I really, really struggled. So I really feel so much for people who are going through that and are struggling with that because I know how long it took me, even throughout my nutrition education, getting my bachelor's, I was in the scientific community and I still had no idea what the real solution was. I still was trying all these things that the dermatologists were prescribing me. Because of my frustration, eventually I started doing my own research on the internet. Yep. And I would spend hours upon hours, you know, reading everything. And back then, that was like 2005, around that year when I really started, it was a really long time ago. So you couldn't find really great information the way you can right now. Eventually, I found Dr. Lauren Cordain's book, it was called The Acne Cure, it changed my life. Because basically, the whole thing was about how hunter gatherers do not get acne, even their children, even the, their teenagers mm -hmm. do not get acne, period, they tie that into their diet. And then they tell you to eat a paleo diet. That was the first time I ever heard of what a paleo diet 
was, and I was about to graduate with my bachelor's in nutrition and dietetics, and I had no idea what paleo was until I read that book. It did massively improve my skin, but not as much as carnivore because I was still eating a lot of fruits. So I was still doing, I was doing basically meat and fruit because I love the fruit. I would get like cherries and mangoes, like with every single meal. And But the amount of improvement compared to every single drug I took, it's like 90% better. It's just mind blowing. So my bachelor's and master's were in nutrition and dietetics. I was trained as a dietitian. I chose to do my PhD in exercise physiology with a minor in nutrition. So I was literally being taught the basics and fundamentals of exercise physiology, let's say on a Monday. And as a PhD student, you teach for the university. So like the next day or two days later, I would have to teach what I just learned. I'm like, I still I'm trying to wrap my head around those concepts. And then I'm supposed to teach them. So that first semester was really overwhelming for me. So that's why I fell off the wagon. And, I, and that's when I started also seeing dermatologists at the University of Miami, the hospital, mm -hmm. and they put me on the, on the birth control. Eventually, I realized no amount of drug is going to help. Drugs are not going to be my solution. So I really have to go back to what I know works. And from there, I started um, reading more books and realizing that keto is the next best step. Yep. And um, I did that for a while. It helped a lot. And eventually, I read um, the plant paradox by Dr. Stephen Gundry, where he talks about not, that not all plant foods are your friends and all these concepts, not once was I exposed to throughout all of my education, whether in Lebanon or whether here at the University of Miami. From there, I started reading about the carnivore diet and watching the interviews. And I remember, remember I told you, your your YouTube videos, you know, Sean Baker's, Paul Saladino, the Petersons. Now it's just amazing. It really is. I mean, no drugs, no topicals, nothing. Amazing. And I can see it in your skin. I Thanks. follow you on Instagram. You guys should definitely check out Dr. Sarah Zaldivar on Instagram. You look fantastic. You don't look like you ever suffer with acne or breakouts or bumps on your cheeks. So it really goes to show diet does make a big yeah. difference. I have to say, though, I do still get breakouts. Um, and I think that's when I overdo it on dairy. So I realized that, yeah, because sometimes I can go crazy with the dairy. <laughs> so, and that wasn't too long ago. Like right now, I'm literally just recovering from like, I think two weeks ago, I had a break. And I'm like, what is happening? You know, yeah. and, uh, and I realized, oh, my God, I'm having cottage cheese every day. I'm having mozzarella cheese every day. So, of course, you know. Right. So now I'm cutting back down on the dairy with the ultimate goal is to not even have dairy or like very minimal amounts, you know, and unfortunately, that's, that's the kind of diet that works for me. It's very, what people might say restrictive, but for me, it's so freeing because having perfect skin and having a good body and having energy and mental clarity. I mean, those things I've struggled with every single one of those things. So now that I feel so amazing and I achieve the success that I have, I don't take it for granted at all. So this is why for me, it doesn't matter if people think it's restrictive. I think it's so freeing. I love that you stand so firm in your beliefs. You know what you want with your life and what you need to eat to support that. I'm very much all about that as well. So let's dive into what you typically eat on the carnivore diet. You mentioned dairy is a no-go for you. What else do you love to eat? Yeah, so I'll tell you what I've been eating recently because I go through phases where I'll do like a lot of shrimp, you know, and uh, a lot of eggs and bacon, you know. So now recently, the past few days, what I'm doing a lot of is ground turkey and mozzarella cheese. I'm, I'm cutting down though, but I'll put a little bit of mozzarella cheese on top for lunch and dinner. And then in the morning, I'll do eggs and some egg whites and some more cheese. I was doing two bowls of cottage cheese a day. So now I've cut it down to one a day. And soon I'm, I think I'm just going to take that off. But I, I feel like my skin is doing great right now. And I feel like maybe it's just because I overdid it with the cottage cheese. So maybe I can do just one a day. So I'm, I'm figuring that out. If I ever do get a breakout again, then I'll know and I'll cut that even out. Do you notice any particular carnivore foods that boost your skin health? All of them boost my skin health. I think the thing that my body cannot tolerate is just the carbs, the plant foods, especially the ones that are high in carbohydrates. 
for yes. whatever reason. Um, but any kind of meat, the more meat I eat, whether even if it's seafood, even if it's like shrimp or lobster or fish, I'm doing great with my skin, like 99% improvement. You want to pay attention if you have a food sensitivity to eggs, which is one of the top seven most common food sensitivities, mm-hmm. then eggs might lead to breakout. So for me, I eat eggs every day and I my skin is great, you know, so you have to try and see if doing carnivore did not completely resolve your skin issue. Pay attention to things like dairy and eggs and maybe fruit, because I know there's like the fruit and honey carnivore community. That's right. That's also I, I would start with those things first. I would start with the fruit and honey, cut those out. Doesn't work, cut out the dairy, doesn't work, then cut out the eggs. Like that would be the order. Similar to Sarah, I had a lot of skin issues. You guys have all seen my before and after. My skin at its worst was just pizza face, you know, filled with red cystic acne, puss filled as well. And the fact yeah. that my skin is no acne, no scarring today is just awesome. And I think what I've learned along my journey is I noticed in the beginning of carnivore, if I were to eat stuff like chicken or pork, uh, for some reason, my skin would be more inflamed. Fast forward to today, three years in, my, my body can digest it now and my skin no longer reacts the way it did in the beginning. So I think another key is time. Maybe the stomach and the gut is still healing and rebalancing, but I think you can yeah. definitely revisit on the dairy and the eggs down the line when you give it enough time and consistency on carnivore. I give it at least 30 days before you make up any kind of decision whether or not something is working for you. You mentioned fruit and honey. I have to ask, what are your thoughts on carnivore diet plus some fruit and honey? Yeah, I think if you have any excess body fat, any, yeah, yeah. Even that tiny little layer that's covering your abs, then I would think long and hard before including honey, even manuka honey and fruits. If you are metabolically healthy, and what we mean by metabolically healthy is that you can very clearly see someone's abs. Yeah. And it's obviously that's not the only way because you can be a bodybuilder and having all kinds of artificial sweeteners and stuff and not necessarily be metabolically healthy, but you yeah, so, still be so super lean and see your abs. So but you understand what I mean, if you're living a primal lifestyle, eating a mainly animal based diet, and you're metabolically healthy, and you don't have any excess body fat to lose you might be fine with some honey and fruits even better. So because a little bit less sugar comes from them as opposed to the concentrated form of sugar that Mm -hmm. comes from honey. Now for me, I did a video not that long ago, reversing my official stance on Manuka honey, because back when I first started my YouTube channel, I created this Manuka honey video where I was talking about all the benefits and I was reading all the research that is looking at the benefits of Manuka honey and um, how great it is. And and how it's got the probiotics and antibacterial activity from this active component that is called MGO or methylglyoxal. I feel like why work on anything in my life if I'm not equally working hard on anti-aging? Because the more you can prolong your life and buy yourself time, the more you can put enough time to troubleshoot any problem in any other area of your life, right? So it's like time is the single most important thing. And we have tools at our disposal that can prolong this. So I feel like everybody should should go psycho in the anti-aging medicine world and like push, push all the research, all the interest there. So um, because of that, there's research showing that methylglyoxal is actually one of the most oxidative molecules that increase drastically the glycation process or they increase drastically the amount of advanced glycation and products for example with collagen when you have advanced glycation and products coming from the manuka honey you're eating it's going to attach to the collagen matrix supporting your skin and that's going to stiffen it and prevent the collagen fibrils from sliding around one another and so when that happens you've got that stiffening but really externally you see it as a loosening of your skin and as wrinkles and like the jowls and just skin aging that's an external physical symptom of aging but that's also happening inside so we might see it and i might talk a lot about aging and wrinkles because people pay attention a lot to that but that's just to grab people's attention because That also indicates that you have internal forms of aging happening, right? It's not just happening on your skin. It's happening everywhere else. And 
the more you speed up the aging process, the sicker you are getting and the quicker you are getting sicker, right? So it's like, when the when this when the aging process progresses, that means your health is deteriorating quickly. And so the same things that can treat the root cause of aging are the same things that can treat the root cause of disease and reverse disease. And so methyl glyoxyl in Manuka honey is a very glycating or um, sugar binding molecule. In other words, it's a molecule that speeds up the aging process. And for that reason, I created a new YouTube video where I reversed my official stance on honey and where I basically tell the world that I no longer do that and I don't recommend it, particularly for the aging process. And then we can dive into fruits as well. If also you want to prolong your life and look as great and feel as great for as long as possible, fruits, the fructose, which is that sweet kind of sugar found in fruits, also leads to those advanced glycation and products. It's actually seven to eight times more glycating compared to savory forms of carbs like starches. I think the goal that we all want is we want to live as long as possible, but still live in a way where we can do everything that we want. So all of that evidence, I think, is enough to share with our audience that maybe just think twice before incorporating the honey and the fruits. What are your thoughts on, you know, safer plant foods like avocados or just some leafy greens here and there? Even those do have anti-nutrients. They still contain them. At the end of the day, they are a plant yeah. and they do want to defend themselves. But compared to tomatoes, peppers, um, eggplants or, you know, grains and legumes, they're not as inflammatory and as crazy, you know, for people to consume. And there is a genetic component. So some people can e even eat the tomatoes and they ke can eat the eggplants and all that kind of stuff, at least when they're young mm -hmm. and not really have any seeming, uh, seemingly terrible health consequences. But even those young people, eventually, as they age out, they lose that ability to tolerate all of those inflammatory veggies. And I would say the vast majority of people need to really think long and hard about that tomato, that cherry tomato on your plate. Yes. But if people are doing that transition, I get it. Like when I first started doing the carnivore diet, I would do the sweet potatoes, get the avocados, and I would do all that kind of stuff. And I think that's fine. And that's a very good transitory food. I think eventually, once you feel so great on carnivore, you realize like, why even have that, you know, like, it's not really necessary. But it's not the worst. Like if all you're eating is some extra lettuce and some extra avocados, but everything else is animal based, you're doing better than 99.99% of the population. So you know, kudos on you. I would love to ask, since you walked that fine line of transitioning over from having more meat and still some safe plant foods and then into strict just meat, did you notice any differences, any extra benefits when you went all in? For sure. For sure. I think the biggest thing is the soreness, the aches and the pains and like the joint pain because I train hard every day. I lift heavy weights and then every day, well, no, every other day I'll sprint or and run you know like i'll run really quickly for like i'll do at least five to seven miles a day every other day and then on the days where i'm not running i'm taking dance classes for like an hour and a half okay. sometimes two hours you know so i'm very active in that area and when i would have those little things that are seemingly you know a little bit of plant foods here and there just for spice it's funny that i would wake up the next day and actually feel the soreness and now I can go as hard as I want. I almost never get sore, even when I'm like hitting PRs and I'm like going into new stages with my weightlifting. I just don't have soreness anymore. And I, I think that is one of the biggest things. Another thing is funny you mentioned it because this morning as I was teaching my class, we were talking about exercise. And I remember that I always also struggled with back pain. I would always do the lat pull down and always think that I have a bad back because every time I would go up in weight doing the lat pull down or the lat cable pull down, I would every few weeks, I would have an issue feel like I'm about to tear my back muscle. So I would stop and then start doing like external rotations because everybody's saying, oh, you need to strengthen your rotator cuffs and you need to do that, that movement. And it's funny. I don't think it was that at all because now I am lifting the heaviest weight and I had I cannot remember it's been years since I've had any sort of issue with my back. So, oh, another thing, far less cravings. 
I think when you keep a little bit of the fun stuff on the side, because I used to have like, let's say a quest bar, I'm still eating, you know, 80% or 90% of my food from animals, but I'll have like that one quest bar, even keeping that, that sweetness, I've noticed once I cut that out, you don't, when you don't have it, you don't ask for it. So there is no more sugary cravings, because for me, that's something another major thing that I struggled with the sugar addiction. It's actually much easier to stick to it once you really go as strict with it as possible. Yes, I'm so glad yeah. you said that. With the mental clarity, I feel like it's a given. Those things are just gonna improve the skin, the hair, uh, the strength and the gym performance. But I feel like yeah. a lot of people forget to mention things that kind of creep up at night. For example, the late night munchies. Those little munchies and the little sugar cravings that pop up at a certain time in the day are fueled by foods that you're still eating. Yeah, or maybe leading to some inflammation. I know that my brain is very sensitive to those things and I, I need a lot more discipline to stick to it if I include those little things here and there, because you might include them at the beginning and then you feel like you want more and more, it becomes a habit. So I think you have to know yourself. Like I know I did paleo for a while, then I did keto for a while. Then I did, you know, carnivore. Every person's personality is different, um, but it definitely, definitely, I think it's easier to stick to the stricture you get with the diet. You know, I actually remember when you had me on your channel, I asked you currently, are you still eating plants or are you 100% carnivore? And you said you still enjoy some plant foods here and there. And I remember you said a quest bar here and there too. So what was the switch to make you want to go in? The, my personality is always getting better in every area of my life, whether that's the YouTube videos I create or whether anything, you know? So for me, it's only natural that I always want to push wherever I'm at right now. So whether it's at the gym or whether it's my, with my diet, I, I've always known that's not the best thing to take the quest bars. <laughs> and so, and now I just, I just did it. You know, I was like, that's it. I'm not buying that stuff anymore. And it's so easy. It's just like the first day. It's not even the first day. It's like the decision. Because once you're trying to make that decision, you get resistance. Like, oh, but I mean, what's one bar? You know, it's not going to make a difference. It's just being able to overcome that resistance that pops up the moment you're thinking about it. Once you do that, you've won. Mm -hmm. And and then I don't you don't even think about it, you know, because you strengthened that disciplined mind and now you've created a habit. So you no longer need discipline to think about that food anymore. Excellent. Let's talk mm -hmm. supplements. Supplements on carnivore or just you personally, do you take supplements? I do for anti-aging purposes. Yeah. I really do not think that any person needs to take supplements, I think you're going to get 95% of the benefit um, just by fixing your diet. But I like to make sure I don't have nutrient deficiencies. And so the supplements that I would take is organ supplements. It's not, you know, so you can even say that that's not really a supplement. That's more like eating organ foods, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would do that. Um, magnesium is huge for me because I am prone to getting headaches. So let's go back to the supplements. I'm doing organ meat supplements, magnesium. Oh, and vitamin D. Now, speaking of electrolytes and magnesium on the carnivore diet, I did want to share an option that's great for my new carnivore watching who needs something that's travel friendly easy to take on the go so this right here is element electrolytes i just got a new box the missing one is just the raw unflavored which is the one i recommend for all of you guys because there is zero stevia zero sweeteners it's just the electrolytes sodium potassium and magnesium only it will look like this when you get your free sample pack so it comes with a little pamphlet showing you guys how to use their electrolyte packs they are very small easy to throw in your bag on the go just look for the teal blue colored label for the unsweetened raw unflavored version so if you guys are looking for electrolytes definitely check out element for a free sample pack just click the link down below in the description box or type the url on the screen you will just have to pay for shipping if i want to take it to another step i would also add fish oil or krill oil for the omega threes, unless somebody is having brain, like the organ that's going to give you optimum levels of omega threes, the omega threes also for the anti aging, because as I was working on the vitamin D video, um, and how it literally adds five years to your life. Yes. Turns out by omega three does the same. It, it elongates your telomeres, you know, those caps at the end of your chromosomes, you can actually test that out. If you go to spectra cell, you can get a test 
um, for that telomere length. And it's going to give you an estimate of what your biological aging is. So telomeres um, are, you know how like your shoelaces have this plastic cap at the ends of it yes. that prevents it from fraying. You have the same exact thing at the ends of your chromosomes. So the chromosome looks like an X, right? <laughs> at the end of every tip, like where my nails are, you have telomeres. And then at the bottom of the finger, you have telomeres as well. And so every time that cell divides, the the chromosomes, the chromosomes is where your DNA is, right? Your DNA is all inside this chromosome. So every time your cells divide, you lose a little bit of length from that telomere. It starts to shorten and shorten and shorten. Once it shortens completely, it's not there anymore. It cannot protect that chromosome that houses the DNA anymore. So now you're prone to mutations. Not only that, eventually, it converts that cell to a zombie cell. <laughs> what is a zombie cell? The scientific term is called senescent cell, but we like to call it zombie cell. <laughs> and a zombie cell is not really alive and not really dead. It's a zombie, meaning that it just sits there and it would have been fine if it just stayed there. The problem is that it is continuously putting out inflammatory molecules from it into your blood, raising the overall level of inflammation in your body, and that speeds up the rate of aging. So those zombie cells are a major target of anti-aging research in medicine. And how can we prevent those zombie cells? Obviously, it's telomere length, pay, paying attention to that. So optimal vitamin D, optimal fish oil. There's so many other things, so many other nutrients, I'm sure that can do that. But those are fresh in my mind from the research I did. Um, exercise and the intense exercise, the more intense, it literally breaks apart and kills off the zombie cells. So exercise is another major anti-aging thing you can do. So, so yeah, so those, those are the reasons why I like to supplement. So with fish oil, you know how sometimes fish oil is not optimal in quality or it's rancid. Could you talk yeah. a little bit about the dangers of that? You don't want to get just regular fish oil from like an over-the-counter cheap one because right. when they do studies it shows like a lot of those products that are cheap and over-the-counter easily accessible um they they're rancid they're oxidized or they're damaged because the type of a uh, fat which is omega-3 it's very unstable so it doesn't last too long so when you leave it on a shelf for too long it can get damaged but there are definitely better brands out there that are third party tested um, that you can safely take and not not be scared that you're taking oxidizer rancid oils. And what I took away from your advice was the brain because you know I'm quite hardcore I want to eat the nutrients whole and fresh so you did say if we eat brain we'll get the same right? Yes and you get the best kind of omega-3 which is DHA because you've got You've got three types of omega-3. You've got the plant form, which is almost useless. <laughs> and then you've got the animal form, which is EPA and DHA. Yeah. The animal form are two ones, right? But even the EPA and DHA, it's really the EPA converting to DHA is what we want. So it's really DHA that's the good stuff. And so your brain or the brain is like 20% DHA. 20% uh, of the fat in the brain is DHA. So it's really found in very large amounts there. So when you're eating brain, you're getting exactly the kind of omega-3 that you want. Salmon is high in omega-3, right? Um, that's also, by the way, great for skin. If you have uh, acne issues, if you're still doing carnivore and you want to take it up a notch, then have salmon every single day i don't care if it's for breakfast lunch or dinner have a piece of salmon every single day that's going to massively increase the anti-inflammatory omega-3 fat in your body i bet if you had that salmon raw it would be even better i love yeah. sashimi and i will try to you know of course get the top quality if i were to eat it raw and now that you say that, I do feel like the days where, or the weeks that I'm incorporating more raw wild salmon, I do see like a boost in the skin health. It glows. It, it does. Yeah. I've gone through phases where I would do a lot of salmon. I need to go back to that. I've been, I've been prepping way too much ground turkey and, you know, meat and that kind of stuff. So 
that it's a good interview to remind me to go back to keeping some salmon. The thing is with salmon, I can't prep it for too long. That's why I fall off the wagon every once in a while, right. because you ha literally have to buy fresh salmon every two days. It doesn't last more than two days in the fridge unless you do the frozen one but i don't like the taste of frozen salmon yeah it doesn't compare right right yeah, yeah it doesn't <laughs> so you dropped a few times meal prep prepping i would love mm. to know why do you do the meal prep and how do you kind of organize what you're going to eat for the week so i cook a little bit and every meal cook it again you know unless you're doing like one meal a day then you want something super fresh like that would work uh but i mean i am so busy you know between the youtube videos i do the amount of exercise i do i teach four courses a semester at miami dade um i you know do those interviews you know i mean a lot and then my husband you know he's like let's go watch a movie I'm like, honey i don't have time and then i just i feel bad <laughs> he's like okay let's watch a movie so it's you know, it's a lot of stuff. So I try to minimize as much as possible anything that's like not at the top of my list. And so whenever I'm cooking, I just cook in large batches and they last four or five days easy in the fridge. That's a great tip. I just wanted Sarah to speak on the benefits of meal prepping because a lot of busy mamas out there or busy uh, entrepreneurs, whatever your job is that is making you busy, just meal prepping on carnivore is probably the best thing you can do to stay on track. 100%. And carnivore is like the easiest diet you can follow if you're a busy individual. Yes. There's, you know, very few decisions that need to be made. You know, that's it. Get one food, cook it, and you're done. Another tip, I was doing an interview with Rena. Yes. I love her. Yeah. <laughs> so she was telling me what she does is she gets ground beef, puts it in an air fryer for nine minutes. So that's another tip try it yes great tip and you know i brought this up with rena i might edit this out but i think it would be so cool if we did like female carnivore roundtable videos where we do Ooh. multiple females together speaking on certain carnivore topics so if you guys want that as future videos we can do it on each other's channels and collaborate more uh let us know down below in the comments if you like that idea oh i think that would be great it was so oh. much fun i had a blast with her we're talking about all like it's it's different because we have the same interests you know as yeah. women you know yeah. so yeah I, I i think we're gonna get a lot of good comments regarding that <laughs> you mentioned exercise being an excellent tool to anti-age let's mm -hmm. talk more on that so what type of exercise what about for females who kind of need to heal and what about the people who want fat loss yeah so if you need to heal like for example when you lost your period and you just needed a low stress environment don't worry about anti-aging at the moment because the thing that's going to give you the anti-aging thing is is really fixing the hormones so focus on that get your period back once that is done then we can include exercise because remember exercise is a form of stress but it's a hormetic stress meaning it's a good stress which means it stresses the body but for a short period of time and as you adapt to it you become healthier and more resilient as a response so what you want to do is any kind but ideally there are two things that you you really cannot choose between and that is cardio and weightlifting and like heavy weightlifting and do not worry you're not gonna bulk up you're not gonna look like the hulk it's not gonna happen trust me so lift super heavy weight that's what's going to give you what a lot of women like to call a toned you know physique and uh it's gonna kill off those zombie cells it's gonna increase growth hormone production it's gonna improve your skin health inc improve the blood flow improve your sleep which will improve your skin health and your mental health and anti-aging so I cannot talk enough about how crucial exercise is for every single area of your life. And yes, you do need both. You do need cardio and you do need to wait to lift heavy weight. And for someone who is quite new to exercise, you know, they just finished the healing process of taking a break and they feel ready and energetic finally to move more. Um, how would you advise on how to even just begin? I would say start with what you can do, do what you can. So don't, don't feel intimidated. Like I still feel like I have so much ahead of me. And when I get there, I'll always feel like that because it's a journey that never ends fitness. You know, you can always be the best at it every single day it can be better than yesterday. So just start with what you can do, what you enjoy 
and develop the habit of moving your body, even if it's just taking dance classes. You don't even have to do a structured program, you know? I've been doing it for a very long time. I mean, I was still in school. I was maybe 13, 14 years old. I would wake up at five o'clock in the morning and pop a Cindy Crawford. Like It was like VCR back then. They didn't have, you know, DVDs. And I would do a one hour workout, calisthenics, like body weight workouts and just like a, a pair of really light weights. And I would do that for an hour and then go to the gym. So I started very early and it took me a while after I finished school. And then I started going to a gym and lifting weights. But even then it was like, it wasn't like now, right now I go to the gym and I try to kill myself. <laughs> and if I don't feel like I'm killing myself, I am disappointed because I feel like mm, that was like a maintenance workout. It wasn't really a workout that's going to improve and give me the gains that I want. So it takes a long time. And that shouldn't necessarily be the focus of people who are just starting out, you know, just everybody transition online, you know, I am finding the best workouts online, a lot of channels, like for me, especially because I'm passionate about dancing. Yes. I'm taking and I'm learning so many new things that I would have to go to so many classes in the past, like physical classes to learn a short amount of steps. And now it's like, Everything you can think of, it's all there on YouTube. So you don't even need anything other than an internet connection. That's all. Uh, you did mention cardio and usually the guests that I interview and I mention exercise, they say, oh, cardio is useless. You know, just focus on the resistance and strength. So why do you love cardio? Yeah. Yeah. No, I disagree. You, so even if you just lift heavy. Now, here's the thing. If I have to choose between two forms of exercise for somebody who doesn't have a lot of time, but also doesn't need to drop body fat. Mm. I would tell them just do the weightlifting. And I, and if you can, if you can try to get um, three sessions of 20 minute each of a run or like something intense, and then you're good. Mm. And the reason why I have a slight bias towards weightlifting is because you're affecting every major muscle group in your body, you're gaining more muscle overall muscle is a more metabolically active tissue, and it's a healthier tissue to have compared to fatty tissue. So you do want to have as much muscle as possible. And not only that, but the more muscle you have, the longer you're going to live, like multiple studies have confirmed wow. that if you really want to prolong your lifespan, make sure you have as much muscle and strength on your frame as possible for as long as possible. The heart muscle isn't really activated similarly to every like if you're doing weightlifting, you're not really going to target that heart muscle really well mm. compared to cardio. Mm. Cardio is literally working out that heart muscle. That's what it is. You're trying to you're trying to reach that heart muscle and have it get um, stressed out so that as it recovers, it becomes stronger and the walls of your heart literally thicken, especially that left ventricle, which is that last chamber that pumps the blood into the rest of your body. It literally thickens so much that you don't need to exert yourself too much to achieve optimal blood flow to your body. And this is why athletes at rest, if you measure their resting heart rate, it's very low yeah. because the heart muscle is so strong. Just, just a few pumps compared to somebody who is sedentary. It has to pump a lot more. You need both. If you want optimal heart health, it is the single or not the single, but like one of the biggest, biggest things you can do to prevent heart disease the number one killer worldwide, right? I mean, most people, if you look at the top 10 causes of death all over the world, most countries are going to have heart disease as number one. Mm -hmm. And that's not just not, the, not just getting a heart attack, it's also like stroke or peripheral artery disease. I mean, all kinds of different diseases that affect your arteries. So you, you gotta you gotta train that heart muscle. Now for fat loss, also, the the more efficient you get at doing cardio, especially the more intense cardio, that leads to more mitochondria production in your cells. And mitochondria is the power plant of the cell, right? That's what actually burns fat and creates ATP or creates energy. So the more conditioned you are to be running faster, then the more mitochondria you have, then even at rest, you're going to be burning more body fat and you're going to have more metabolic flexibility compared to somebody who is not doing that form of cardiovascular exercise. Not only that, 
the mitochondria, the healthier your mitochondria and the more numerous mitochondria you have, the better anti-aging prognosis or you're, you're going to basically live much longer than somebody who has damaged mitochondria or not as many mitochondria as you do. So, I mean, the benefits, again, are, are, are numerous. Here's the thing, though. I wouldn't train for a marathon. If the goal is everything I just mentioned, I would not go for a marathon. There is no real good benefit to that in terms of anti-aging or protecting your joints or even weight loss. It's just way too much stress without enough of a stimulus to or without enough time to recover from this long amount of exercise that you're doing. And so the, the net effect is you have an increase in stress as opposed to um, an improvement in overall health. So focus more on short bursts, high intensity forms of cardio, things that are going to raise your heart rate really, really high for short durations of time. That is far more superior than training for a marathon and doing steady state cardio for hours on end. What are your, you know, daily hacks? Doesn't have to be related to nutrition that you can share with us to help with anti-aging. Ooh, daily hacks. I think, I think the sleep, I always make sure I get the eight to nine hours of sleep. I wish, I wish I could only get like seven or six, like some people genetically can do that. Um, but for me to feel refreshed, it's really like eight to nine really nine i'm just still in denial that i need nine but i really do need nine <laughs> so yeah so optimal sleep like really the basics the boring things that nobody wants to hear but that's because that's it you know those are the basics that you need to get to get dialed in so optimal sleep on um, my workouts uh, probably the workouts are like the biggest anti-aging benefit compared to everything else that i do the zero carb diet the less carbs, the better. Remember also red meat, not only does it have zero carbs, so no glycation, but it has carnosine and L-carnitine. L-carnitine is like the biggest anti-aging molecule. It's like the fountain of youth is in L-carnitine. So I would highly recommend people go check out the anti-aging potential of that. And another thing in red meat is carnosine, which literally detangles the glycation products, those advanced glycation end products. It, it like, it's like undoing the damage that sugar and carbs did to your cells and tissues. It literally goes and untangles them. I mean, how amazing is that? So, you know, the carnivore diet is obviously one of the other great, great things that I do. Um, I do think also the supplementation with the optimizing vitamin D. I don't take, I don't take uh, omega-3, but I will. I definitely will. Like if I really want to go all out and seriously plan it out, I would definitely start taking the omega-3s. Um, and so many other actually nutrients are also beneficial for that, like things like iodine that we don't hear about too much. Um, there is not one vitamin, uh, there is not one uh, parasite or virus or bacteria that has ever developed resistance to iodine, for example. So I do collagen, so I make sure I get enough collagen. And uh, you get that from the skins of chicken. So if you're eating chicken, don't be scared of the skin. That's where the collagen is. Um, gristle and meat, that's where the collagen is. So their modern diet is almost completely deficient in collagen. And that's a problem for anti-aging and, and ligaments and, and the collagen matrix supporting your skin. Wait, yeah. share really quick. How old are you? I'm going to turn 35 um, May 16th. In wow. you two look, weeks or so. Where can people find more of you and any exciting announcements or projects that you would like to share? Ooh, um, you can find me on YouTube. So Dr. Sarah Zaldivar, Sarah with an H. Um, Instagram, same thing. There's re it's very easy to find me. There's really no other accounts similar to my name. Um, I Those are the biggest places where I'm active, but mainly YouTube is mainly the thing that I'm most active on. What can people expect? More, more interviews, more videos that I'm pumping out on YouTube. My, my goal is really to become a full-time YouTuber. So while I do still teach on the side, and I love it, of course, but the goal is obviously to take it to a place where there's really no limit, you know? So 
the goal is to focus more on that. And the thing that I'm really excited about is um, doing the dance uh, cardio workouts. I do have a few here and there. I just started playing around with it, but I want to do it with better production. So this is why I keep taking those dance classes to keep learning and learning and learning so that in a few weeks or a couple of months, I can start um, filming my own uh, better quality, you know, dance cardio workouts. So yeah, that's, that's the direction I'm going very, very excited. I mean, YouTube is so exciting because I, I get to learn too. you know, a lot of the stuff that I've learned, um, also came from doing my research on carnivore, you know, and research for YouTube, you just learn so much diving in to the articles and stuff. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited for you and guys, we can all help by subscribing to her channel, sharing all of her videos that you guys love, commenting, um, supporting her on all platforms. It really helps all of us as content creators to keep doing what we love doing for you guys. So Dr. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Bella. I had a blast. Hey, SP fam. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you guys enjoyed this conversation with Dr. Zaldivar, please hit like down below. Feel free to share this video with your friends and family and comment down below any other guest requests you would like me to feature. Again, Dr. Sarah Zaldivar will be a guest in the May challenge. It will also feature Dr. Stephanie Rimka, Michelle Hearn, and Coach Jane Thomas. You guys will get to meet all of these amazing guests in the challenge live on Zoom and ask them all of your questions. They will show up, answer, inspire us, teach us their ways. And on top of that, you guys will have access to eight hours every single week throughout the month of live Zoom calls hosted by me and my team of carnivore coaches. We have meetings focusing on just fat loss and fitness. We have meetings just on fasting, just on priming. We of course have meetings focusing on just how to start the carnivore diet, how to tweak and troubleshoot for our carnivore newcomers. And of course we have meetings on carnivore health concerns and lab work. I have to shout out my excellent team of coaches, coach Steven Thomas, coach Raymond Nazon, coach Cherish Thompson, coach Emily Harvo and coach Adek. You guys will get to meet each of these fantastic coaches. You'll get to work with them, receive their guidance, help and advice. And I just cannot wait to meet all of you guys, see all of my familiar returning members, beautiful faces and continue to cheer you guys on. Make sure you guys are on track and reaching your goals. I do these challenges every single month, but to sign up and join the very next challenge, just go to svgmeetup.com or click the link down below to read more details and to sign up. I'll see you guys in the next video. I wish you all a beautiful meat fuel day. See you guys soon.